Hello, everybody, and happy Thursday. Hope you're having a good or in fact a great week uh, this week and welcome to another adobe live great to have you here uh, if you're watching on youtube that's just fine but really to get involved what you need to do is come across to behance.net slash adobe live because that way you can actually use the real chat that we can see and get involved with the community and ask questions so i'll say hello to a few of you in just the moment but for now i need to introduce our amazing guest who is uh, an artist that specializes in paper craft and tactile illustration and that would be the one and only kyle bean how are you doing kyle i'm very well thank you thank you Excellent. for inviting me Oh, it's great to have you here. And everybody's in for a real treat with your work. That's the great thing about these. Every weekday <laughs> we're here, they get treated to another visual feast. And this one is uh, really, really fantastic. They're going to love it. Let's just say hello to a few of the people we've got here. Because, Carl, what we get is actually we've got some people who have been with us since day one and have turned wow. up for just about every live stream. We get people from as far afield as New Zealand uh, and Arizona who join. In fact, Bob, who joins from Arizona, he joins in real time and sets an alarm so that Amazing. he can see the show go out live, which is incredible. Uh, but Steve's here from uh, from New Zealand. We've got Kirsty, we've got Sandrine, we've got Catherine, we've got Tim in the background, as always, keeping it all real and stable. We've got Gareth. Hi, Gareth. We've got uh, oh, so many, so much chat going on. We've got Andreas. Guten Tag. Andreas is here as well. I think I saw Sean. Also, just a moment ago uh, in there, so Guten Tag, also Sean, joins the German stream and uh, the UK stream. Uh, we've got some new people that I, that I haven't seen before. So Jason, hi, Jason. Oh, we've got Angus, who we see uh, quite often. So great to see you. Don't forget uh, that you can go ahead and add your questions into the chat. And as we go along, I'll try and find a way to pose them across to Kyle as we go and watch the gradual unflattening of uh, a slow motion unflattening of his work in front of us. So Kyle, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um, uh, yeah, I, uh, so my name, as, as we've already learned, is Kyle Bean. Um, I live in London and I'm an artist. Um, I've been kind of uh, doing the work that I do now for more or less 10 years and um, obviously it has evolved and but I, a lot of what I do has also uh, remained very similar over that time. I, I have a very, uh, I guess you could say, particular process um, where I uh, mix together very analog um, techniques involving craft um, making physical models out of paper and cardboard and other materials. But I use um, a lot of software to, uh, to do my preliminary stages of my work. So do my sketches in Illustrator, for example. And I also use Photoshop um, to sort of finalize um, an image that I've taken of the, of the models that I make. Um, and yeah, so I, I generally work um, uh, for a, a range of clients, uh, editorial um, for magazines and things like that, uh, as well as commercial clients on a whole host of uh, types of projects, um, you know, uh, often ranging from uh, installations um, for shop windows um, to creating uh, imagery like illustrations um, for campaigns and like I said for, for articles in magazines. Um, it's interesting I studied illustration um, and uh, during my time studying I decided that uh, I actually didn't really want to draw <laughs> which is a interesting thing to discover about yourself when you're on an illustration, illustration course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, but I sort of remembered during my time at university that I very much loved making things. Um, and what I did love about my illustration course is the way it helped me think about communication visually. Um, so I was able to sort of respond to illustration briefs, um, but in a very tactile way using my kind of I guess uh, all, all the stuff that I did as a kid, like spending a lot of time building Lego models, 
making crazy things out of toilet roll tubes, things like that. All of those kinds of things that I kind of love doing, I suddenly thought, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> I wonder if I can try and use those skills and interests that I had in um, in a kind of, you know, in a way that could actually, I could make a living from it, hopefully, um, and, and utilize those, you know, the, the things I learned through studying illustration. And so that's kind of what I did. And uh, my website, which um, I'm share we're sharing with you here, um, is kind of a collection, if you like, of, of some of my projects that I've been working on over the years. Um, you can see some of them move. Um, so a lot of my most recent work is actually either stop motion animation or um, filmed live action. Um, and for those of you who don't know, stop motion animation is uh, where you uh, make something, photograph it, move it a little bit, and then photograph it again. And you keep doing that until um, it basically appears like that thing is completely in motion. Um, so um, it, it's a sort of, again, it's a, that hybrid of, it's a very analog uh, technique in many ways. But um, the brilliant thing, of course, nowadays is that there's so much beautiful software that helps um, with that process to make yeah. it uh, more efficient and, um, and yeah, just generally um, a really a fun technique to, to use. Um, and so that's uh, you know some of my motion work um during uh interestingly during this pandemic um i've i've scaled back my working methods a little bit um so whilst i often work with a team of people um more recently obviously i've i've tried to adapt to be more self-sufficient so i've been doing some personal work where like for example this one this is called mixed media meals i've mm -hmm. essentially uh <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm interested in, I love cooking and obviously during this time I've been spending a lot of time making my own meals, um, not going out anywhere and so I decided to recreate some meals that I made uh, for myself um, but I made them out of uh, materials I had in my home studio here. So um, I have lots of paper, lots of random stationery um, you know that i just kind of basically thought ah i wonder how you know maybe maybe string could be turned into spaghetti or you know maybe maybe polystyrene could be become sushi uh you know rice <laughs> um so i i have this uh so th this was a really fun thing to do um just uh just to kind of do myself using the resources i had available uh here um i'm just going to show you my instagram handle um, so if you're for those interested, it's Kyle J. Bean. Um, I started showing a bit more of the behind the scenes of my work on my Instagram page um, because uh, it seems to be something that people are interested in seeing. Um, I put out this story um, uh, when I let me just see if it'll start from the beginning. Maybe it won't. I don't know how I can do that if I go back here to the beginning. So this is kind of what my studio looks like, my home studio. So you can see there's lots of stationery. I have this desk area that I photograph my work. So, um, and you know, some of the work I do looks like this. So it's, it's, it's quite clean, quite graphic, um, but it has this tactile uh, hands-on approach. Um, and I really love, I think I've always loved that combination of sort of clean and graphic, um, well, I guess for want of a better word, illustrative, um, but but still where I get to have this kind of hands-on approach in the process as well. So, um, so yeah, it makes them so beautifully genuine, right? You can see, you know, it's so much more than, and, and it's it's just got that slight edge that CGI doesn't have, right? It, you can tell this. Yeah, I mean, I, it's interesting. People often ask me, um, you know, they often maybe even on first glance assume that my work is is CG. And um, interestingly, I don't, you know, I don't see that as like a negative thing uh, mm. because for me, it's more about am I communicating uh, the right thing here in terms of, you know, is it is it a nice image ultimately or a nice a nice animation or a nice film? Um, but basically. 
I the way I see it is that my what I've learned and where where I get most enjoyment out of my work is through this combination of analog and digital processes. And I think for me personally, if I spent my entire time creating everything um, purely like on the computer in CG, I I would have an el- there would be an element of me that would feel like, you know, I don't get that much as much enjoyment out of it. I like the combination. It's it's that it's that perfect combination for me of of like, uh, you know, having a bit of time, being able to you know work with physical materials and and sort of. Um, you know so that i'm fulfilling that urge that i have there um but then absolutely loving the way in which software especially photoshop helps kind of uh just tidy up the stuff that that i want tidying up and and helps to enhance um the final image that i'm delivering for a for a client or even just for myself so so that's yeah that's what ultimately it's that combination of things that has ultimately spurred me on to to have kept doing this for for quite a while now and hopefully will continue to do <laughs> i mean how long i mean this this is going to be a really really difficult question to to mm. to answer because it always is a difficult question but if um how long does the kind of average i know there's mm. no such thing as an average project but yeah. if you had to say generally i spend about this long on a project what would what would be what would you say was well, I would say so. It, let's take um, let's take a sort of um, a typical example of the sorts of jobs I've been doing during lockdown, which has largely been for commissions for editorial clients. Yeah. So for magazines, um, whether they're you know corporate magazines or whether they're kind of more like uh, you know monthly uh, publications, um, you know I, I work. Things like The Guardian and, and, you know, American, various American publications. If I get given a commission by one of those sorts of clients, I usually have somewhere in the vicinity of, of about two weeks from start to finish. And during that time, I won't be working solidly on the projects during all that time. But what I will be doing is going through a specific set of, of stages. Um, once I've understood the the article that the the images are for um i go through a process of sketching out ideas they will then get approved usually within a day or two um, by the client um once they're approved i then go through a process of making the physically uh the things that are within that image so within the sketch so if i if i say i'm gonna uh make a a house for example, like a miniature house, um, I will draw that up. I will then use my drawing as a reference point to then physically make that house out of paper. Um, and obviously over time, I've got quicker, more efficient at doing this thing. So, you know, whereas in the beginning, I would have probably spent days trying to just figure out how I'm gonna make this thing. Um, I think, you know, 10 years of doing this, I've, I've learned how in each step of the way, I can make my life a little bit easier for myself and but still produce uh you know still produce the results um and you know i'll go through that and then once i've made the thing i then photograph it and i have to i photograph it compositionally so that it matches the sketch that i've had approved right so using the colors using the background paper uh the background colors that that match the colors that of as, as close as possible i mean that's what Photoshop's for, right? You can yeah, yeah. tweak, tweak colours and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'll match the colours as close as I can um, in real life, and then once the image is then put into Photoshop, I can then do whatever adjustments I need to uh, to to make it right for both me and the client. Um, and and uh, you know, actually, with most of my work, um, they tend to be fairly minimal adjustments usually clean up general clean up using like clone stamp tool a uh, little bit of brightness contrast color correction stuff the example i want to go into more detail with you today is something is a project where i did use a few techniques in photoshop to mm. to really get it right um for 
for what uh, I wanted to achieve. It's actually, I'm going to show you on my website, the project here, the final image, so to speak. So it's this one. So this um, is a very, again, very graphic image. Um, it's, uh, it was for an article for a magazine that was about um, uh, self checkouts, effectively. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to show in a very simple graphic way, this notion of when you pay at a, at a supermarket, um it's kind of like it's all done on your phone effectively yeah. like or it's all done digitally so this was my illustration that i supplied to them now in order for me to get to this place the first thing i did was sketch out a few different compositions in illustrator and i'm going to show you that now so these are kind of how my drawings look when i'm sketching out an idea for a client they're just line drawings they're pretty again um they're quite simple in some ways, but they are also in some ways <laughs> quite accurate. Yeah. Um, so uh, I tend to just draw shapes. I do some, I do a little bit of freehand stuff as well, but you can see I presented, the, I, I initially drew up maybe three or four different versions of a similar concept. And when I was happy with a, a particular composition, which is this last one here, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see. So this was the composition I was I was happy with. Um, I then um, and this is where some of your viewers will probably tell me you can do this much simpler. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, like, people are saying that, that yeah. Gareth is saying, for example, wow, very clean drawings. So uh, got a couple of yeah, little I jokes think... in there, like unexpected <laughs> item in. <laughs> in yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do a slightly weird thing, I think, though, where I, 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 I like colouring stuff in Photoshop for some reason. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really know why. So what I would do is take that Illustrator sketch, you know, um, I would I would basically make sure I've got it in, you know, RGB or CMYK. Um, and I would literally just kind of use like the paint bucket tool and stuff to 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 kind of like make particular areas, the colours I want. This would be in order for me to quickly get a sense of like a palette that I'm liking. Um, you know, I, I would have a play around basically until I'm happy with a, a color palette. I also, because I know that I'm going to be photographing, I'm going to mm. be making and photographing this thing. Something I sometimes like to do for clients um, is actually indicate a bit of lighting in Photoshop. Yeah. And the way I do that is through uh, depicting shadows so I would actually use the paintbrush tool on a sort of low opacity mm -hmm. and actually uh, sim as simple as this I would kind of like kind of draw a kind of a shadow of some description that would indicate to the client oh this is roughly the lighting is going to be kind of coming from that particular direction um, and it's literally just a drawn thing like that yeah. um, I would, so then I would present effectively this to a client as a sketch. Mm -hmm. So you can already see that it's it's actually looking pretty close to what I end up making, bizarrely. It is, um, yes, yeah. but um, but in a kind of flat illustrator form. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I would present something like that. Uh, once that's approved by the client, um, I would then uh, go through this process of making these elements that are in this image out of paper or out of other materials but in this case it was all paper so the way i do that and this is one of the things i've done in more recent years to speed up my process rather than doing it entirely by hand i start by drawing nets in illustrator yep so you can see here i've i've taken my drawing as a reference point i've just chucked it in here to show you i've taken my drawing as a reference point and I've drawn physical nets. So I've taken like, for example, this milk carton. I thought spatially about, okay, what does, what would that milk carton look like if it was a net? And turns out it looks like this. So essentially I've drawn that, that object as though it's a net. Um, I've separated out all of the different elements. So for example, the, the, the red, the label here, I'm going to, I want to cut that out of red paper, but whilst the main body of the bottle would be made out of white paper, right? 
So I would separate all the elements and they would be as vectors ready to cut. So they would be flattened out. And you'll notice down here um, that I've got two layers, a score layer and a cut layer. Yeah. So if I if I un if I sort of get rid of the score layer, you'll see that in those milk cartons, you've yeah. got the cut, you've got just the cut layer, which is the outside edge, right? Yeah. All of the other lines, those are the scores. Yeah. So um and the, the good thing then is that I can then use my um I've got a uh a paper cutting machine. I was just going to ask if you've got a laser cutter yeah, or a paper it's cutter. Not, yeah. So it's not a laser cutter. Right. I actually use, um, so the thing, because I work on such a miniature scale, um, yeah. if I were to use a paper cutter, uh, sorry, if I was to use a laser cutter, um, you, you would see the burn mark. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I have instead is a, it's actually a, it's a, it's got like a tiny blade. Is it like a cricket a, maker or a Gerber? It's not, I've got something called a, this is, sounds very uh, sort of like Robocop or something. I've got a Graph Tech Cutter Plotter. So it's a... It's, right. Um, are they the ones that are made by Roland? Are they are they the ones that are made by Roland? I think it's called Graph Tech is the company. Is, is Graph Tech is the company, is it? No, right. Yeah. Right. Oh, cool. Uh, but, but the good... So when I first uh, started doing this, um, there wasn't very many of these paper plotters around. Um there was a there was a couple of companies that were doing them and they were quite obscure. But nowadays um, they're very easy to come by and the price has really come down. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, and the great thing about the one that I use in particular is that it's compatible with Illustrator. Yep. So some of them uh, require you to do your drawings in another software, but because I work with uh, Illustrator all the time. I wanted to make sure that I had one that I could work directly from Illustrator with. So um, it's a sort of plug-in thing with Illustrator. So uh, essentially what I would do is once I'm happy with my drawings here, um, I would select, uh, you know, for example, if I wanted to cut all of that. In fact, what I would actually normally do first is separate into the colors of paper. So I've already said that the, the label, for example, these labels here that I've highlighted would be red. So I would put, I would actually separate all of my artboards by color at this point um, so that it's just easy for me to know, OK, this particular page, I need to load a, uh, a piece of white paper. This page, I need to load a piece of red paper into my machine and I would do them one at a time, but color by color. Yeah. So what I would do is select, um, say, for example, anything that I want to be cut out of white paper. I would select, I would then go um, into into file and down to the piece of software that I that is compatible with Illustrator called Cutting Master. Um, it then opens up this uh, uh, these two little things. And essentially, this is this is a bit like a printer dialog. So it's a bit like yeah. when you go file print. Yeah, it's very similar. Um, but essentially, it shows the two layers. Sorry, cancel that. Sorry. Um, it shows the two layers and then um, I can set the pressure. So I'm not going to go into this in too much detail. This is a bit no, no, no. Can I just ask quickly, just, yeah. just while you're doing that, because um, Gareth was asking earlier, is there a particular paper manufacturer you use and is there a particular weight that you use for the, for the That's paper? That's a very good question. I'm actually not hugely loyal to one, <laughs> to one particular paper manufacturer. For me, it's all about, is it uh, the right color? Does it have the right kind of finish, uh, the right kind, you know, mostly I'm using matte paper. I'm not, I, I yeah. don't tend to use shiny paper. Occasionally I do. Yeah. Um, but one thing you have to be obviously aware of when you're making models is the scale at which you're making and making sure the thickness of the cardboard or paper is appropriate for the scale. Yep. So if I'm making something really small, but it's intricate, I'm not going to use a really thick paper or card. I'm going to use something thin um, because it just becomes very fiddly if you and, and doesn't look as neat. If I'm making something on a bigger scale, I would be more inclined to use a thicker card. Yeah, and, so that, yeah um, that's right. You won't fold. Right, exactly. With, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, a lot of the stuff I make, uh, that's kind of more f to become an illustration, I tend to use thinner card and, mm. and paper because they tend to be quite small scale. 
Um, I'm going to show you some examples of actual physical models in a minute um, cool. that I've made, but I just wanted to I just wanted to show you this stage. So essentially, <clears throat> I set the score pressure to quite low here in this in this dialog box, and then I set the cut pressure to much higher. And that what that does is essentially it will cut all the score lines first, then it will and then it will cut all the the cut lines afterwards, mm. and it will be it will cut. Uh, sorry, the cut pressure will mean that it cuts right the way through the paper, whereas the score layer, it will keep it just so that it's a score and doesn't, yeah. you know, cut through. What you get at the end of it um, is is this. So I have taken this from um, the sheet. Yeah. I should have used I should have used white paper because that's what I ended up using to make the milk milk carton, but I couldn't find any today. So I'm just showing you the. Uh, uh, showing you some grey paper here. So this is sort of slightly thin card, this is. And then what I would do is, you can see there that it's already got the pre-scored lines that I'm just folding there. Yeah, so fantastic. I would fold that all up um, on all the score lines. And I've even drawn tabs. So this is also an important thing. So let me just show you in, in, the, in Illustrator here that there's tabs on my yeah. drawings. And I'm just going to close all of that stuff because I don't need it anymore. Do you ever find yourself using something like a folding bone or anything to get yeah. a crease really, really tight? I do have a folding bone, actually. I've got one somewhere here. Oh, I didn't yeah, mine's in a pot oh, anyway. over there as well. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Occasionally, I, yeah. occasionally I use a folding bone. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, exactly. That a folding bone helps to just sort of make sure that you've got a really crisp line yeah. um, when you're folding. So you can see yeah. here, I'm folding all the tabs. Once I folded it all, and it's kind of got the the, the right shape um, together, what I would then do is glue the tabs. So I, I like physically, you know, get this glue. I use um, kind of a, it's a brand called Yoohoo, but I mean, yep. anything, anything that's- I've uh, not seen that for years, Yoohoo glue. Uh, I've not. Yeah, I think it's a German brand. I, I think right. it, it basically it's a quick drying. Um, it, it's good for like you know uh, if you want something to be dried to 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 bond paper very quickly. I think mm. it bonds wood as well. Yeah. Um, and so it means that I'm not having to to you know if I was using like PVA, um, yeah. PVA can sometimes you you're sort of standing there for out you know for a long time trying to hold it together or you mm. know whatever. If I want something quick drying. Um, but isn't like super glue, which is, which is, um, you know, that can get very messy very yeah. quickly. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather, you know, I, I tend to use something like Yoohoo. Um, and then essentially, uh, once I've cut all my elements, so all the different elements that you are here in Illustrator, once I've cut all of those, I would, uh, assemble my little paper models. Um, I'm just going to show you some examples. So some things that I've made. Uh, this is like a really tiny, tiny, tiny little. Um, That's so cool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> little bag. Um, this is a a little paper house um, I made for another job. Um, I've got a sort of I don't know what you'd call it, like a yeah, it's chair, like a, like a dining a chair, chair or dining, something. Yeah, dining chair. All, yeah. All, 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 it's all, all constructed in this method. So it started out in Illustrator as templates. Uh, I then cut them, glue them together. Um, I've even got this bizarre kind of, I don't know if you can see there, like frying pan that's got like eggs in it. And <laughs> like so fun. Tomatoes. They really yeah. are fun. Really, really um, fun. I sometimes use a combination of materials. So it's not pure, it's not always purely paper. So for example, this, uh, these eggs, I'm just going to show you one here, tiny little egg there. So yeah. the, the the white is paper, but then the, the middle you... bit is actually. I was just going to ask how you did that dome because. Yeah, so I use um I've got drawers in my studio full of random things like wooden balls, like of various yep. diameters of and florist balls. balls and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I kind of use that and use a bit. Of, I've got like you can probably just about see behind me. I've got like a whole wall of spray paint and stuff. Mm. So I. I really do use a mix of materials, but paper mm. is my paper is go definitely to. my my mm. go-to for for kind of general. And the good thing about paper, of course, is that um, you don't really need. I mean, I say that, but I've got a machine, but you don't need any sort of you don't need a big workshop or anything to work with it. No. You just you just use. I use uh, my cutting plotter, 
in conjunction with my illustrator software and then a scalpel some glue a cutting 10a effectively <laughs> 10a 10a classic 10a yeah so for going back to the particular um project that we're talking about this one the one that i've got the sketch for here yeah so i go th i then basically uh, go through a process of assembling i'm just going to show you so there's the little um finished fresh <laughs> milk carton and the bananas I've, I've actually got the banana here with me so i'll show you that there so good so, keeping your hands clean though it must be constant you must be constantly <laughs> washing your hands because i mean you can't afford any grease prints on there at all can yeah, you yeah that, that is the slightly unfortunate thing about paper is that obviously it, whilst it is brilliant and versatile and mm. rel relatively affordable as materials go and come in all the colors it you have to be careful and obviously you can't i have to be really careful when i've got like you know i've got this glass of water here for example on my desk uh i need to be careful that that's well away from anything yeah they're not natural on. friends yeah. are yeah. they paper yeah. and water exactly <laughs> so uh so yeah so i've you yeah. know essentially and they, all these elements that i cut out so there's like a little random baguette thing there in the shopping basket i cut them all out separately then what i do is uh, in my photography area in my in my in my home studio here i set up the image i set up the composition um as close as possible to uh how it's drawn in my sketch so you can just about see here that i've got like the, the main elements there, they're rigged up <laughs> quite crudely, if I'm honest, uh, with sort it of- It doesn't matter, down. it's- Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, and then I set them up. Uh, obviously I've selected the color backgrounds, the paper um, that I want uh, that, you know, to, to shoot against. Like I said, I use Photoshop a bit and you'll see later, mm -hmm. I use Photoshop to tweak the colors a bit afterwards. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I rig it up like this. Um, I then use my camera uh, here, this 5D yep. SLR, uh, to capture the the sort of the, the composition as I see it, as I want it, with uh, under the lights that I've got. Um, what I also tend to do is uh, capture a, what's called a, a blank plate, which is yep. essentially a separate image that's um, where the camera doesn't move, nothing changes. No, the lighting stays the same and I just get rid of all the objects in the set and just just photograph the background and um, I use that as a sort of backup for if I need to do any adjustments in Photoshop um, right, and you can on, also on negate backup. easily the shadows that way from the exactly. from the actual armatures themselves exactly. yeah exactly yeah. so that is exactly what I do and I'll be showing that to you next so yeah. um, so I've got the image I then um, I've got my plates, I've got uh, all of those. I then take it into Photoshop, so that's my sketch. Um, uh, let me just check there. Yeah, there we go. So that's what I captured. Um, and that's it, obviously, with a completely unretouched with the rigs um, still there, visible. Um, and you'll see here as well in my layers panel, that the uh, I've I've got a, a few layers here. One of them is uh, with just the basket. Do you see there? So I've yeah. I've captured. I've taken out the the phone and the the bananas and all of that. Kept the lighting and the camera exactly the same. I've captured it with just the basket and the and the shadow from that basket. Yeah. And the re the reason for that is um, because I don't like the shadow. I don't like the, I don't like this kind of really messy shadow of coming from the phone coming from the rig and also i i quite like the idea when i when i was capturing this i noticed that there was a bit of fall off shadow coming into this basket that i didn't much like and i wanted to kind of brighten it all up a bit so that's why i made sure that i had this image as well what i then do is go through a series of cleanup methods so the first thing i would probably want to do is get rid of these rods so the way i would do that is um use the select tool and make sure i go really close in here you can see how the little imperfections of my model um but that's okay because you know we want to make sure we keep it feeling a little bit real <laughs> yeah absolutely um, yeah yeah and um 
I would select the area, like just r roughly like that, mm -hmm. um, and use the. I think I probably would use the clone stamp tool, maybe. Or oh, is this the? Yeah, something like something like this. Um, let me just check. And I would kind of essentially get rid of get rid of this bar. And that's now, interesting because I, could, I no, thought no, you were just no. going to delete there or mask off. So that you went through to your um, to your original I could background. Do. Yeah, we well, see. This is where yeah. you're going to tell me all the things I could do better. No, no, you do. Here. You, you <laughs> I mean, what you do is fantastic. So I'm just, I'm just, I was expecting yeah, one so way, but sort of different. yeah, yeah. But, but then equally, you're right. I could just do this. <laughs> 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 so, um, but yeah, the reason I think there was a reason why I didn't do that, and I. I think it's to do with what I'm about to do, which is some color changes. Right. Um, but let's, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to go back and just do this method for a minute. Uh, of course I can. Yeah. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I get it. See, see, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, interesting because yeah. I, I think mm. I, there's a sort of weird method to my madness here. Yeah. No, it makes where, perfect sense um, now when you say that. So, yeah. Yeah. So I would go through, get rid of all of this. Um, and the reason I've got the select tool around it. The reason I've masked off that area is so that I don't make a mistake and accidentally get rid of, you know, this phone, for example. Yes. So I, I want to make sure that um, I don't delete any of that. Yeah. And then I would unselect and, you know, it, obviously it needs a little bit of like cleaning up at that edge, but you get the idea. I would do the same for, for up here as well. So I would go right in, make sure I'm really careful with the way I'm selecting around this area so that I don't get rid of any of the milk bottle uh, create a sectioned off area again here and I would do the exact same sort of method uh, to just get rid of um, oops there we go now you can kind of see I wonder if that will work actually yeah that works as well so, you know, I'd just go through that until that's all got rid of. Now, the client, this is um, going back to your point about can you not just delete it? Um, yeah. I actually can on this particular image, but there are some images that I've created where the background is much more um, varied. Yeah. It's got a much more like uh, graduated kind of effect in the background. Um, the clone stamp tool, I was able to do that because this is so flat. Do you see what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. um, if I were to, if I had a background that had much more of a graduation in tone, mm. I would definitely, I would definitely use the method you're suggesting, which is mm. to delete it from and, and allow the plate, the clean plate from the other photograph I've taken to come through. Yeah. And I would, you know, so there's lots of different techniques you can use to, to sort of get rid of the rods and yeah. things like that. So essentially you've got something like that. Um, now what I'm going to show next is that what I, what I then would do is on the basket only layer, this one, what, what I do is, um, oh no, what, hang on, what, what have I done here? So I obviously want to keep the top half of the image, right? This top half of the image, I don't want to change. It's just this shadow down here that I want yeah. to so what I did is cut out the bottom half of the image. There mm. you go. Do you see that there? Yeah. I yeah. Cut out the, the bottom half of the image so that now I've got this nice clean shadow just coming mm. from the basket and I've got rid of all of that kind of like darkness that was coming from the rest. Um, so then you've got this very seamless kind of like effect here. Now you could argue, you could argue that this isn't real in the sense that, you know, I've gone through this process where I've tidied up the shadow, got rid of the rods. Um, but it's just that that's how I imagine it's an illustration at the end of the Exactly. Day. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. that's so what I would say to that. Yeah. You, you do like, I understand there, there is always a balance with this stuff though. So mm -hmm. you can go too far and I've definitely, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it comes down to a taste thing. It's like, how much do you want to clean up? this image how much do you mm. want to make it a kind of perfect illustration of what you're trying to say without too much uh things cluttering the image versus how do i keep it feeling 
like a, 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 a fun tactile image that's 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 gone through this um, analog process. Do you see, do you see what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and, I and, and that's it's a question that I'm always asking myself is like, do you know how much do I want to clean this thing up? Because I could re I could I could go through this now and look. So you see all these little bits of dust. You know, I, I would be inclined to get rid of some of the worst bits, so the bits yeah. that kind of show up. But you've got a balance to strike, right, between yeah. between that cleanliness and between robbing it of its charm from the fact right. that yeah, that's exactly. that's the problem, isn't it? So, so the thing, so the things that now I've got to this stage, I would look mm. at this and go through. Okay, I want to get look that you can see. There's like that's probably some weird artifact on my camera sensor. So I would, you know, I would, I would probably go through that now and kind of, you know, do a bit of like spot. Uh, I use the spot. Uh, what's it spot called? healing brush. Spot healing yeah. brush. That's what yeah, I yeah. Do. Uh, I'd use that. I sometimes use a clone stamp. I would go through it. Now, the other thing that I've noticed is that that background is very close in color to the banana. Like there is a separation there, but it's not as separated as I want. So, um, and that's partly even though in real life um, there there was a, a separation in colour, the way my camera has picked it up is it's actually made the background quite a lot more yellow than I want. Yeah. So you can see, see back in my sketch that I've actually got the background slightly more orange. So the way I would fix that is by uh, effectively adjusting this, this background here. Mm. And I can do that by um, putting on the banana layer separately. Uh, there we go, I think. Now this is where I might I might have got this set up a bit wrong. But no um, let me just see, as an example, if I change the hue. Yeah, and target the oranges uh, in the in the preset. Yeah, let me, let me, just, let me just try this a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Do you see that yeah. there? So the yeah, banana. Yeah. I've got the banana on a separate layer. So the banana mm. is, uh, the, the, there's nothing changing with the banana, but the background yellow is. So I yeah. can just shift that, um, you know, I don't actually want to go too crazy with it. I just want to, I, I just want to like change it a little bit. Some, something around about there. Mm. Um, Did you know, I, by the way, that you could use an on image, the on image editing thing there back in uh, the, if you just tap, if, if you don't mind just for a minute, if you just go back, yeah. Just for a second, to so the hue saturation dialogue. Okay. Yeah, so command um, you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If you looked at, can you see the small icon on the left hand side? It's like a little finger, stapler accident yeah. finger. Okay. Is uh, is my name for it, which has suddenly become the official name uh, for it. You can see here that if you want to modify the hue, you hold down the command key, click on the color that you want to change, and it automatically brackets it. So just okay, hold down the second. hold down the command while that's active. Hold down the command key. Yeah. And then click and drag left and right, and you'll see that you're changing the hue. Ah. Can you see that? And it's bracketed it straight away. I don't, you might find that useful in the future. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. That's very interesting. Great. Okay. So, <laughs> there you um, go. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I'm sure, like I said, there's probably lots of your viewers who are like frustrated at uh, They're loving it, actually. Roundabout <laughs> ways I've been doing stuff. Yeah. Um, the main uh, thing is is achieving the result, right? It doesn't matter yeah, how you get there. Exactly. So you know, it's what's comfortable for you. So once I, I've done a bit of fiddling, um, I've done all of the kind of masking that I needed to, uh, you know, bit of brightness and all that. I end up with something like this. This is what I. This is the final thing that I delivered. So you can see I just slightly brightened up the whites, made sure that the white balance was correct on the on the milk bottle. Um, I, I've kind of generally slightly brightened the image and contrast a little bit, but it still has that lovely paper, you know, you can still see the, the texture there of the paper, it's mm -hmm. all, you know, um, and I, I've kind of made sure that my, on the real one, I obviously slightly made sure that I was really paying attention to the way I was masking things so that there wasn't sort of weird artifacts and stuff from, from the editing process. So yeah, so that, so that is in a nutshell. <laughs> How I get from, you know, effectively um, a sketch like an illustrator like this. Um, Those drawings are, are really good, by the way. Yeah, well, they I, are really crisp, and th these are all think, using the Illustrator native tools. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's all using yeah. Illustrator. Yeah, so mm. I, yeah, I like I said, I do a lot of it um, 
in uh yeah i do the i do the main line drawings in in illustrator and then once yeah. i'm happy i tend to put that into photoshop to color for some reason i don't mm. i don't know just what, <laughs> and what, I, I, also, what I like as well you know is that you see if, if uh, it just shows how lazy i am maybe in one way but uh, if i was making those bananas i'd be quite happy to make the shape out of paper but i'd probably add the sort of brown elements there the spotting and whatever else i'd probably get a posca pen and drop those in yeah but it's I mean, beautiful I, I, that you've cut them that you've, it, that you've i think i i you know i i do use other materials as, as you mm. know like as i said but i think i just i just really love the aesthetic that working with paper gives like, yeah um and even though i'm ultimately delivering a, a flat image you know what i mean i'm delivering a, a you know like a jpeg or a tiff file like the fact that it's gone through this process is very pleasing for me um mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very much one for you know like i half my enjoyment in my job is the process you know it's like yeah um and and whilst i'm completely in awe of of people who who complete who create their illustrations and image and animations in cg um the enjoyment for me is is through this mixture of of this bizarre kind of combination of but they're probably in awe of you. Like, you know, they're, they're it, 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 you know, they probably are because some of those people are probably thinking, I could never stand and cut that out, glue it <laughs> together, have the patience to do that. It would all end up, you know. So it goes yeah. both ways, I think, Carl. Right? You know, so totally. Well, the, the lovely thing about obviously like working with physical materials as well is there's a nice story that I can show people in my, you know. As a, as, a, as a kind of marketing tool for myself is that I can show them behind mm. the scenes images, you know, like, uh, you know, like things like this, just, you know, I, you know, I've got, I've got, these are like elements that I made for a job recently. I just decided so I can lay them all out, you know, and then like that's, that's a behind the scenes image of me setting it all up ready to photograph. So it's like, mm. uh, you know, I've got this wealth of kind of uh, content, if you like, that I get from my project purely because I have this slightly crazy analog um, part to it. Do you know what I mean? Where I'm going through. Do you uh, find it meditative in a way, though, when you're actually because once you've you've done the engineering side yeah. of the thing, you're actually and you're assembling it. Do you find that that's somewhere where you can slip away to like another space and you're just do you find it relaxing in that yeah, way? Yeah, I do. I do. I think, um, yeah, and and I I think the certainly the making side of my job, I, I it's the time where I can kind of not go on autopilot, but I, I can I can um, I let my mind wander a little bit while I'm doing it. Because I don't mm. know, you know, I listen to music, and you know, um, I think all of that side of what I do for a job is 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 definitely the most enjoyable re relaxing time for me and, yeah. and i think it doesn't it almost doesn't feel like a job at times uh, <laughs> yeah um so i think yeah absolutely it's meditative uh, that, in that, that, in that rig regard. in the middle of the screen right now oh uh, yeah is yeah crazy yeah this so is the whole thing with this great cardboard mythology and the, like like the slow on the slow motion unflattening yeah. of, of your work is just brilliant <laughs> so i I work, uh, the example we've been going through today is very much me start to finish working on the process alone, you know, with, with feedback from a client. But I do work on much bigger jobs as well, where I'm working with a team of people. And yeah, that was an example of a project that I did with, uh, with, which, you know, feel free to, to, for you all to take a look at that. But mm. was, yeah, a job, a job for Lego that I did that I was thrilled by, but it was very much a, a team exercise that and uh using the skill set of many different uh people so i was you know i love that's what i love about my job is that is the variety and you know the fact that i can go from doing a job with loads and loads of people and and you know lots of kind of client um you know stages and all of that to doing something like this personal project uh where it was just me making something in my kitchen and then looking around my studio and thinking well i can recreate that out of elastic bands or <laughs> <That's brilliant. laughs> you know like and then just you know like just i i think i think it's that variety that keeps me going and keeps me compelled to to make keep it. doing whatever it is yeah. that I'm, you know like doing and like i'm obviously uh i've actually 
interestingly been I've, I've been working from my home studio for many years actually and it's interesting now uh, because of the circumstances we're in like it hasn't been a huge transition for me to adapt the way I work. Um, the only difference, as I say it said at the beginning, is that um, I'm kind of sticking to the miniatures uh, more than anything, more you know, yeah. more than most. Sticking to making miniature models, stuff that I know that I can create here, photograph here, work on here, yeah. um, and uh, you know, oh, there's my. I was talking about the, the collection of balls that I've got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Various wooden balls in my studio. Uh, you know, I've got there's my plan chest as well. So you can yeah. see, like, I keep all my paper uh, sheets organised by roughly by sort of colour temperature, if you like. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I've got a little collection of copper and wood uh, like and metal rods, dowels yeah. that I yeah. cut up and spray paint. I have various kind of like weird drawers full of, you know, things like yeah, it's miniature trees, <laughs> things that I've either made in the past or have sourced from like a kind of model shop yeah. um and yeah there's lots of you know my that's my life is just you know surrounded by these collections of things that come in useful um when i'm making images and animating. fantastic so, i've got yeah. um if i can because I, I mean one yeah. of the things that's really evident in your work is there's a lot of axon axonometry in in the view and that actually gareth has asked Mm. Uh, what what the challenge is like of setting up your camera for sort of an orthographic position that sort of the yeah. that kind of thing you're getting how, how challenging a, is that it's a really good that's a really good um thing that they've noticed so yeah i i quite like using um quite isometric style draw, mm. you know like particularly the example we've been through um an image like this to create an image like this, you can't use a wide angle lens. You have to mm. use something that's, um, I think I use something at least like 80, 80 millimeter lens yep. on my camera to do that. And what that does, um, for those of you who don't know a huge amount about photography, it just means that uh, you don't get that, that kind of distortion um, in, the, in, the, in the image that a wide angle lens would give you. So. Mm. I think of it's, it's funny because we're actually in the process of um, moving house and uh, wide angle lens is king when you're trying to sell your house because it makes your it makes your rooms look bigger because it's yeah. it's sort of deliberately kind of distorting the image to, to to see as much as possible. But in my work, I kind of I want to keep things very graphic and uh, make sure like things are like lines are parallel. You keep the uprights as parallel as possible. Um, and it does create this kind of weird, I quite like the weird sense of like it being like a very graphic illustration and yet it's, it's, it's also a physical thing. And it's quite, it's, a, it's a, like a slightly odd combination, which I love. Um, not everyone would like that combination, but I, I do personally, it's like a, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would hate to see this image with, with where that basket has got like lines Kind of diverging like that because i'm yeah. using a wide angle lens i i like the fact that it's so um kind of illustrative and graphic so so yeah so i use a, lo a longer lens something like an 85 mil something like yeah. that at least um uh so that means that i usually have to have my camera quite far away from my desk actually yeah um to be able to get it all in image um and if I do, actually, that is something I do do sometimes. Occasionally, I need the help of Photoshop to to further straighten things in yeah. post. So I do yeah. occasionally use the like the perspective tool to just slightly tweak yeah. if my line, if my uprights in my image are not quite perfect, and I use yeah. the the ruler the ruler tool and the sort of margins and all that to help me yeah. guide the guides to help me to get that right. Um, but the again, geometry you know, things in Photoshop are actually incredible they're very good Re they're really very good. good yeah, yeah. Um, another thing that I use uh, when I'm photographing um, is uh, I have this software that enables me to to make sure I get the focus in uh, completely perfect from back to front in the image so, so like a example, wide depth of field from the yeah yeah so uh, this maybe isn't the best example but I'll use it as an example say for example this is obviously a physical uh, paper phone here, right? Yeah. 
<clears throat> the focal point, if I was to focus on this, I'd have to choose a point where I want my camera to focus. Mm. So if, but if I want it all to be very graphic and everything in focus, so if I want the back of the phone there to be just as in focus as the front of the phone here, I would normally use um, a piece of software that enables me to take multiple photos of the same image, but where different focal points. And what it does is it stacks, it yeah. stacks them. Now, I'm, I, you might be able to tell me if Photoshop has that capability. It does. Or not, cause, right, okay. So it that, does. That's interesting, because maybe yeah. I could migrate over to that. But I, I, it, is some, mm. it is a technique I use in my work to enable, again, to give that graphic, uh, sharp image. Um, uh, yeah, in fact, you know, if you investigate stacks in Photoshop, you'll find out there's there's, right. there's a couple of different ways that that can be hit, that 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 can Amazing. happen to composite those. But check out stacks, stack mode. Stacks, okay, great. Yep. Um, well, that's that's all helpful. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I I think we got a couple more minutes. If there's any more questions, I don't know. I think we have. Well, we had a few. Uh, so we've got. Uh, so Kirsty was asking earlier how long you've actually been doing this because I don't think we got. Ex I mean, I know it's quite yeah. a while you mentioned. I, but how long? Uh, uh, I started, so I graduated in 2009 mm. and I was very lucky um, that I started getting commissions during that summer when I graduated. So it was just perfect timing where I managed to get my website up and running. I had my degree show um, and uh, sort of one or two commissions started trickling in. Uh, I did, I think my, one of my first ever ones was for the New York Times um illustrating an article for them uh and at the same time as like the the sort of image-based commissions i was getting i also had one or two like installation commissions so making models for to be in display in like a window for a for a fashion brand so i i and i've sort of it, that's the the other i suppose advantage of the methods that i use is that there's a lot of crossover between set design and illustration in what I do. Yeah. And so I've actually utilized my skills in making stuff in more of a set design capacity as well. So yeah. whilst I tend to call this kind of work that I do in illustration or photo illustration, yeah. um, because that's kind of what it is, you know, mm. but I also collaborate a lot with photographers. I also, um, and, I, and if they're enlisting me to work with them, I'm more in the capacity of a set designer. Yeah. And so, which is, which is great because it's, it's actually very similar skill set for me. It's just that I'm less responsible for the lighting and the image itself and more responsible for the making of, of the construction and design. So I, and I love that about my job. I love that variety, uh, as I said, so, um, you know and and it's also good to learn from other people as well like le learn other skills i mean i've certainly picked up things over the years with regard to the way i want to light my work um through working with photographers so uh you know you get a sense over time of of the th things that work for you and how you can incorporate that into your work and yeah and i and i um i think yeah i guess gradually over that what we with 2020 so yeah it's 11 yeah 11 years 11 years yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so um uh, you know i've kind of gradually built up to a point where i've got these different ways that i work but fundamentally my work's still very much about uh making things and using software to to help deliver a, a, a deliverable you know a, a digital yeah. image of some description so yeah it's great that it's kept that that whole thing going through that you've you know that it hasn't that, that it's kept your work in the in the same workflow it's been amazing uh, having you on here carl really really great oh, really pleasure. really enjoyed every moment uh, of this stream your work's fantastic really really love it and everybody here has loved it as well uh, okay. so just before we close out i'll just say to uh to the chat thanks ever so much for joining us hope you've enjoyed this i know that some of you have, have already expressed how much you've enjoyed it uh but if i hope you've all enjoyed it very very much and don't forget uh, that we're here every weekday between uh 12 and 1 and also 
it doesn't have to end here. You can join us on our Discord. Tim's just popped that link into the chat. Uh, so, yeah, join us again tomorrow uh, for something exciting. You'll see the screen in just a moment telling you what's coming up. But for now, uh, from us, it's cheerio. Thanks ever so much, Kyle. And, uh, and I hope you'll come Thank back. Thank you very much. I do hope you'll come back at some point in the future. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Take care, everyone. Stay creative. See you later. Bye. <laughs>